I think I'm gonna give you a new name. What's the name? A visionary nation builder. My vision over the next 20 years is to develop one million homes across sub-Saharan Africa. Yeah, I, you need to accept it. Um, you don't think about it. You're building a city yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah. And even though they're building, I'm not seeing the buildings, but already he's planting his grass, he's planting his trees, and you don't cut down trees too. No, we don't. Actually, if we don't, if, if we have to cut down any one tree, we have to replace it by five more trees. See, he, he has not welcomed me yet, but I just want to welcome you all to Tough City. Five thousand units. And how are you gonna fund five thousand units? Well, we'll find the fund. We, we, we have financiers who are with us. We have Shelter Afrique as a partner with us. We have Eco Bank as a partner. We have the um, West African Investment Bank with us. We have Afri Exim Bank with us. Trust Bank Gambia is with us. GT Bank is with us. You see, when you deliver, if you have a brand and you deliver and people know that you can do it. Finances will run to you and they've been running to us to partner with us. I think you've already built a brand and anyone watching this video knows it. From where we've been to, I think in the next five to ten years for me to come here, I'll see more houses springing up like popcorn in here. Well, that's too far. Come oh. in December. December? Which is in the next eight months, we have our first estate will be ready. The clusters of estates are being built. By December this year, inshallah, the whole estate will be ready and people will be living here. So which means first phase has already begun? Yeah, we've started, we've started. The infrastructure, as you can see, is all in. The roads are going to be paved with interlocking blocks. All our landscaping has been done. All the water, as you can see, the sprinklers are on. Yeah. The landscaping, you see these palm trees here? Yeah. I brought them in from Nigeria. These are the big royal palms. I had to fly them in. I flew in over 2,000 of them. So it will all be lined up along the dual carriage entrance. As you enter the city, you can see it's a dual lane. Going in two lanes, going out two lanes, and you go across the city. What makes it a city then? Well, the city is that it's not an estate. You have clusters of estates in the city. So for residents, residential. So you have several estates within the city, which is normal. So that's our model. What you see here is 145 hectares of land, which is just the first phase. First phase? First phase is 145 hectares. What is the total project then? A total project is about 500 hectares. So you have 500 hectares, but the first phase is 145 hectares. And then you have a commercial area. So the commercial area, you'll have huge shopping malls, you'll have admin blocks, you'll have petrol stations. And then in the, um, uh, in the educational area, you have a primary school, a high school, a university, a vocational training college, you know, and also religious sites. Tough. I mean, then you have, you have, that's not, that's not all. We also have a special economic zone where we're going to now inculcate the agricultural value chain into the city. 
So people who are going to live here, when completed, it's about 30,000 residents. So we're not only interested in just putting a roof over people's head, but we're interested in feeding them. So there'll be a poultry here. There'll be a poultry farm. There will be also horticultural and agricultural farms here. Mm. But, you know, with intensive agriculture. So every consumable will be, con will, be, will be cultivated here. So if you want eggs, there'll be a poultry farm to supply fresh eggs. If you want milk, there will be an animal husbandry business here. You know, fish? Fish, there'll be a fish farm. Aquaculture will be here because we have a river next to the estate. So that's the way to go. So people will live, walk, and play in the city. Do you have a model or a design that we need to look at? Yes, we have a model which we display now. And let's walk in and I will show you. So as you, as you can see here, we start, this is, this is where we entered. Yeah. And then this is, this is where we are. Okay. Now, they are all done in clusters. For example, if you see this cluster here, all this here, going around like this, coming like this in here, this is all commercial. And it is done not only for the residents, but even for people who are living outside of the, of the, of the city. So when you come in on your right, as you can see here, you have a shopping mall. This in red is all a shopping mall with adequate parking, a lot of parking in here. Then next to the shopping mall, you have the farmer's market. You know, with the farmer's market, because we're going to work on the agricultural value chain, all the produces are going to be sold here. And you can also have people producing from outside and bring it here for sale. Again, it can be sold to the residents and also people coming from outside. It's a smart city. Mm. So you're going to have high-speed internet. So you want to attract anybody who's into tech to come and rent out here or buy a space. Then this here is a transit center. A transit center is where when the public transport comes, that's where they stop. So the public transport will stop in here. That's a transit center. This is a hospital and clinic. Now, we're now on all these here, we partner with experts. Already we are talking to a group of doctors who are Africans based in the diaspora, and uh, we, we're going to advocate for telemedicine. So they'll be here, and certain things will be done with you know, doctors who are all over the world. Then behind the hospital and the clinic, you have the police station and the fire station. Then that's a petrol station in the corner here, and this is a mixed-use warehouse. So as I said, this cluster all is commercial. Now after this cluster, as you go, go in, you have the educational cluster. This is all education. All there is all educational. So when you start from here, you have a primary school in this one here. Then after the primary school, you have the high school in there. Then after the high school, you have a vocational training center in there. Then after the vocational training center, next to it is the university. It's a private university. And then there you have the student hostel which is student accommodation, these blocks here. Yeah. Now, next to it, you have a mosque. There's also a church inside. Now, this doesn't have too much control, but once you want to enter the security, the residential area, there is total control here, security control. So this is the main gatehouse, where if you are living here, you have to have your key card, electronic key card, before you enter. So that one in Port Harcourt. Yes. Because that we need to know, what will it be? Port Harcourt, there is actually a lot of beautiful things about Port Harcourt. Okay. And one of those beautiful things is there are so many beautiful estates here, and we're standing right in front of one of them right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Golf Estate. Golf Estate. Yeah. Are you the owner? Ah, don't ah. I wish. <laughs> Are you the owner? I'm the owner in spirit. I wish, I wish. Oh, I'm the owner, but okay. This place is really amazing. I have friends that have apartments here, you know. So you have friends that live here? Yeah, I have friends that live here. They, you know, bought the apartment and stuff, and it's amazing. It's really nice. Uh, is it's, it owned by an African? It's owned by a Gambian, actually. Yeah. A Gambian. A Gambian owns an estate. Yeah, in Nigeria. In Nigeria. Built by Nigerians, though. 
a Gambian yeah. owner built by Nigerians. Yeah. So African connection. Exactly. <laughs> would exactly. you love to take me in there? Because I need I to. I would love to take you in, but I actually don't have access. You don't have you access. You have to live inside. It's a very secure estate. Wow. You have to live inside to have access to the estate. Now, if you want to come and visit, you have to have a code. So if I am leaving here, you will have to call me, I'll give you a code, and then security will allow you in. Now, everything beyond here is residential. Mm. But as I said, it's different estates in the city. For the first phase, we have seven different estates that are built here. Yeah. Now, the estates are numerical, but in our local languages in the ethnic, in the, uh, the, their name after the, well, a, a number within an ethnic language, an ethnic group. So the first one is called Bena. Bena in Wolof, you know, means one. As you can see now, what is going on? This is Bena. It is Bena Estate. Bena is sold out. It's all sold out. But let me tell you what is interesting on this project. Forget about the houses being provided. Mm. We're, we're creating 60,000 jobs directly. You know, because there are 5,000 houses to be built and every house on average, there are 12 workers on it. So that's 60,000. And then we have indirect jobs being created because all the suppliers, all the, even the women who cook the food. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Rabbil Alamin. First of all, I thank God, I thank MD. Before, I was not doing this kind of business. I find job tired. Then, I start to work somewhere, but the thing did not go like the way I want it. I leave it. I started my this business in Dalaba. First of all, I started in Dalaba. I'm doing this business for two years in Dalaba. Then, I come and had tough city here, and they say that the project is very big. So let me come and try. Let me come and see the place first before starting business. I just come and see the place, how the place look like, how here be. Then I go and plan what to bring. So thank God now I'm making profits. Small, small. Now it's better than before. You know, so in direct jobs, there are 25,000 jobs being created. And all of them are from the Gambia? Or it's mixed. I told you, me, I'm African. I'm a Pan-Africanist. What is important is if you can deliver, we give you a job. We don't look at nationality. We are African, and I guess that's what our countries ask, call for. So we demonstrate it here. Why do you love working with Africans? Because, they, well, they, they need it. It's absolutely needed. So we have a moral obligation to create jobs for our African brothers. But people say Africans are not capable to or, understand that some of their job contractor project managers they, they pick people from different part of the world not well, africans you have seen me in port harcourt you've seen what we've done there yeah and it was all done by africans one of them let me tell you something one of them came to me when i was in port harcourt told yeah. me that hey you have to respect mr tough man yeah because even as a project manager when i was on side working <laughs> people will come and say pay me money before you continue yeah but you never talked about all those challenges oh uh, no 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 well there are challenges all the time i mean i in, in port harcourt I ran into a bank robbery. There was a bank robbery, bullets were flying everywhere. I'm sure this is the first time my family will know. I, because they would have asked me, please come back home. You know? So I've had those experiences. The first time I walked into a site, people came with machetes, huh? Said, no, these are father's land, you couldn't walk here. And my staff, they ran away. But I engaged them. And they ended up walking there. Whoa. Yeah, so so me, as I said, I love the challenges and I, I overcome the challenges. It's Africa, man. Is this a walk path or a bicycle path? This is the bicycle lane and then this is the, this is the, walk, this is the um, uh, pedestrian lane. Pedestrian. Yeah. So one next to each other, you have a, a bicycle lane and a pedestrian lane. And in between, obviously, you have all these hedges here, all these flowers. So by the time they grow up and they are all trimmed, it will be beautiful and also it will form a boundary. Who are the people that are 
making sure that this city comes to light. I mean, the, the workers, the people working in here. Well, I, I'm, I want to really um, acknowledge the Gambian ladies, the Gambian women folk around the community. We have ladies who are doing all this landscaping here, and they're also doing all the cleaning. And I am pleasantly happy and surprised that, you know, they're doing so well. Oh. You know, apart from them, you know, we are an African-based development company. So anywhere we go, anybody who comes in, we give you work. When I went to Nigeria, I mean, I must have told you, I took Gambians there, I took Senegalese there, and they were welcomed. And that's what really ECOWAS calls for. And that's what also the African continental free trade area calls for. So if you go on site, you will find Ghanaians, you will find Nigerians, you will find Senegalese, you will find Gambians. And we are proud that we are employing Africans to do this. Mr. Ousu. Mr. Maya. It's a pleasure seeing you, man. Good to see you too. They say you're from Ghana. Yep. How long have you been working with TAF? Oh, since 2002, 2003. Hey, it's like 10 years this old. Almost, almost getting to 20 years. Of... Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. How does it feel working with TAF, man? Oh, I'm always feel really happy because TAF is a hero for even Africa, not only me around. A lot of Ghanaians are benefit and a lot of Nigerians, a lot of Togo. Because my team, I have Togo, Benin, Senegalese, Ghanaians, Nigerians, all inside. And Benin Republic as well. But uh, l let me understand, so who are you then? What do you do in here? I'm a contractor since I started with TAF. Oh. Yeah. I think I met you in Nigeria. Yep. Oh, Port Harcourt. Yep, yep. <laughs> 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 that's oh, true, that's so, true. So you, you, you are part of the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At, at, yeah, at Gulf Estate. Gulf Estate. Yeah. And now you are part of no, this one This one, too. yes. This guy is rich. You see his stomach? He's making so much money. He's good, that's small. <laughs> oh my God. So how, like, how many people work for you now? So. Oh, right now, I have almost about 60 people. Credit and private. Yeah, uh, in different nationalities. Whoa, uh, yeah. you have people from Ghana. Yeah, Ghana, um, we have Nigeria. We have Togo, we have Benin Republic, Senegal, Guinea as well. That's so impressive. a lot of. Uh, huh? So, so how, let me understand. So, um, Mr. Taf get the uh, houses and they assign it to you. Yep. And then you guys make sure yeah, that. Yeah, we, we, we bear it. Show me all these your houses, how many yeah, houses? Yeah, I have almost about 17 houses I'm doing. <laughs> I'm so impressed. <laughs> this is just uh, Benna. So yeah, after Benna, yeah. you guys move you to. Move to Didi. Didi, uh, That's impressive. What are you gonna tell Africans watching us? Ah, uh, I hope all fellow Africans have to <laughs> watch what Taf is doing because if you get like this man, like maybe ten in Africa, we are not going to suffer in Africa. We always create job for youths and uh, young guys, and we are benefit a lot. Before I work with Taf. I can go to Europe, but there's no need for me to go to Europe because what I'm getting here is more than for me to be in United States. I'm what? getting a, a, a lot of money in Africa. I'm working with TAF. But what have you been able to achieve just oh. by working with TAF? As so right now, I'm not going to tell you like if you go to Ghana, which is Got Goso, mm -hmm. which is half a region, okay. I have which is 48 rooms hotel. I'm putting it and the land, and I have my own compound. So I can't. Etc. My father, my parents, my family, everybody is eating from me and I'm feeling comfortable. Even if I'm not tested, I can't get this. I can't achieve this. I can't. So I always pray to Tav to get more contact so that we, we can never stop work. Yeah, we'll be working always. Yeah. Mr. Wusu, I want to say thank you so much for talking yeah. to me. And yeah, uh, thank you, you are an inspiration, man. Thank and you. And I, I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're ready to grow up now, <laughs> my guy. I'm ready to grow up like now. You. Wow. <laughs> you're ready to grow up, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, Dixon. My boy. How far now? I did now. Hey, I thought I'm going to see only Gambians here. Nigerians are everywhere. Hey, wow, you know Nigeria everywhere in the world. What are you doing here? Actually, I'm building for TAF here. We started all the way in Nigeria as far back as 2013. Oh, so you're a part of the Port Harcourt project? 
Sure. I was part of the golf estate. And you are here now? Yeah. But tell me, how does it feel like working with Taf? It has really boosted my understanding in the field of construction. Mm. I think at the level I am with Taf and the experience I've gotten, I can be independent. Really? You, you'll also be a real estate developer in the future? Maybe. It all depends. The future will tell. Mm. So, so what, what is your role in here? My role here is to make sure that this project goes and TAF achieves his, his aim. That is my role. So which means you've got workers that works for you too? Yes, I brought some Nigerians that are here working with me under the platform of TAF Africa Global. Uh, is that only Nigerians that you're working with? No, just like as I said, I have some Gambians. I have like uh, six Gambians working with me here. Six Gambians, I have like uh, ceremonials, I have like eight of them. Then about 17 Nigerians that are here with me. There are so many Africans watching us. What will be your final message to Africans watching us? Wow, my final message is that whatever you are doing in the field of construction, please endeavor to put in your best and do it well because people are watching and people that are buying and checking quality. I'm sure we'll have close to over 200 contractors. So I am appealing to those Africans, all those young men, to get up and get trained. You know, you say, oh, I don't have work. You have to learn how to, fi how to be a carpenter. You have to learn how to be an, a steel fixer. You have to learn how to be a mason. And then you will take good money home. I can assure you it's good money. Remember, I started as a carpenter. <laughs> so if I, if I am here today, any young person just say, okay, I want to be like him, but don't think that by listening to me to inspire you will make you be like me. No, 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 no. What do no, I have no. to do then? You have to work hard. You can see it, man. You can see all this happened when I was young. You see? All this, huh? You walk with a saw. You lift blocks. You must sweat for it. I worked for 15 years doing my apprenticeship, working for others, before I set up my own business. So you don't just get up one morning and just say, oh, I want to run my business. I tell the young ones all the time when they come, my friend, you cannot be a CEO. You start your business, the first thing you do is just have a card with a Maya CEO. My friend, CEO, CEO, it takes time for you to be the chief executive officer. Now, let me speak to one of your workers and I'm gonna get back to you. Okay, great. You know, one thing I love about Taf is the fact that he employs more young women and you're one of them. Yeah, I am. What do you do in here? I'm an engineer. You're an engineer? Yeah. From which country? I'm a Gambia. From Gambia? Yeah. Legende? <laughs> My fine. Uh, <laughs> I guess you are the only female engineer here. Yeah, yeah, I'm the only female engineer. Like I've been, uh, when I was going to school, mm -hmm. I came here for a chargeman, like around year 2000, and I was trained by staff himself. Really? Yeah. So, you know, as women, you got married, stop and come back but he's my inspiration and my motivator so that's why you came back that's why i came back but i've been doing so many things business and every other thing but that, that was not me engineering. this is me the engineering like as he said if you cut my flesh you meet cement and <laughs> you know concrete there so so this is me that's i was amazing. born an engineer but he also motivates me since i was a Young girl, I used to see him going and coming. So when I finished school, I said that I want to be like him. Even at school, I told him I'm going for my internship uh, uh, at TAF. Uh, how, how, how does it feel working with TAF? Oh my God, it's great. That's the greatest thing that's ever happened to my life. Whoa. He's so great, he motivates you. And as a woman also, he really loves and adores me and likes the way I work in the office also. Everybody, my staff, sorry, my colleagues and everybody adores me. And the men around me, you know, 
they they really helping me. They're so exposed, Whoa. you know. Uh, they saw me like everything. I've 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 great colleagues. You, yeah. you know what? How, how does it feel like being a female engineer? That's so great. Only who knows it feels it. <laughs> Your father is 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 great. It's great. I love it. Even though I'm angry, if I come to side, I'm okay. I don't have stress. Yeah, uh -huh. I just love what I'm doing. Yeah. Final I, I, message to Africans watching us. Women out there, we have to be like them, you know. When I'm in the field, I don't see myself as a woman. I'm just an engineer, simple engineer. So I, I, I tried my level best to get it done. Thank you so much for yeah. talking to me. <laughs> yeah, that's my you my favorite YouTuber. Oh wow! Nice to meet you. I met you in life. Oh, I have an engineer as a fan. Yeah. Oh. <laughs>Baki in Jola means four. Then the fifth estate in uh, Serer is called Batik. Then the sixth estate is in Manjago. In Manjago, and it's called Paj. And then the seventh estate in English or broken English or Aku is called Seven. Now, let me show you something very interesting. Yeah. The sixth estate, which is called Paj, is also a retirement estate. We're targeting the elderly to move in here. Mm. So we will make provision for the services that they require, like health, you know, um, uh, clubhouse, sporting facilities. That's a pond here, a tradition pond. Yeah. And that's a wellness center. Now next to them, you have a golf course. There'll be a nine hole golf course next to them. After the golf course, we have the entertainment area. Here you'll have rows of restaurants, nightclubs, anything, anything to do with entertainment is around here. Because this is close to a river. Yeah. This river here is called the Alahane River. And that is why we are going to now go into aquaculture. So you go around here, the river goes, flows all the way to here, next to the estate. This is all green. And as you can see, this dual carriage road here ends up here. From the entrance all the way to here. And then we also have, next to every road, we have a bicycle lane, and then we have a a pedestrian lane. So nobody should walk where the cars are driving. And obviously you can see the landscaping and that's why we started already. You can see there we're gonna create an um, artificial beach. In this cluster here, this is where the special economic zone is. So because what we want is that anybody who wants to invest in the economic zone in terms of light industries, your workers will live in their state, so you're close by. This actually, it decongests the current city. By the way, this city we are building here is twice bigger than Banjul, the city of the Gambia, the capital of the Gambia. This is Whoa. twice bigger than the, our capital. So in here, in the uh, special economic zone, we have light industries, we have greenhouses, we have uh, storage in there, we have showrooms and other workshops. We also have a sports stadium in there. So as I said, this is live, walk, and play. I don't even know what to say. I mean, some of you might be wondering, like, will he be able to do it? Listen, he has done it before. I mean, when I went to Port Harcourt, I had to talk to people around, and all of them were saying that. When this man came here, 
most of us were even laughing at him, man. But he has done it. It always seems impossible until it's done. If one person has been able to achieve this, what do you think is wrong with our African government then? Because what you've done, imagine, it's been done by African government. I mean, we will eradicate poverty because the people in here have jobs to do. I, I, I did, um, I think I, I saw a documentary on how Gambia is known for sex tourism, how Gambians are known for parkway and all of that. You're doing all of that in here. What is that thing that Yeah, let me tell you what the secret is. Um, I, I didn't do it. Uh, the key word is teamwork. I have a solid team behind me. The teamwork has somebody who mobilized the team. That's together. the visionary. It's Thank always you. good to have a visionary. So does it mean that we don't have a visionary leader no. to put the team together to get... Well, we need visionaries. You know, one of, the, one of the features of a very good leader is to be a futuristic one. You know, feature, feature, you must be futuristic. You must think ahead. You must think, you know, ages, decades, you know, centuries ahead of the people that you lead. If you fail to have this as a leader, then you are not a good leader. Remember, a leader can be good or bad, but to be a good leader, you must, be, you must have that futuristic vision. You must see something that none of your followers can see. They must believe in you too. Mm. They, can be, they can see, like when I first came here, a lot of people thought that me, I was crazy. This is the bush. No, nobody will buy here, even my marketing team. They had no confidence that anybody will buy anything here. But that's what a good leader does. You go there and um, whatever anybody says no, you say yes. You see everybody going east, you tell them no, it's north or it's west. And you have to convince them to do it. When I met you in Port Harcourt, I asked you about if you had a chance to change one thing in Africa, you said leadership. You know, for me, I'm a big fan of actions. That's why I had to carry a camera just to travel around to show Africa in my own way, even though African government are not supporting what I do. It's an individual project. No one is funding me. I find myself and I go, it's been a year now. What have you done? Because you say you want to change leadership. I mean, what are you doing so far to change the leadership that you talked about in Port Harcourt? Well, you know, I believe in, in walking the talk. Uh, I, I don't blame people. That's not my style. Thank you. I look at my inner self and try to see what I can do, no matter how small. So what I've done is set up a leadership academy. Because if Africa is to change, we need to be futuristic. I have a vision. I want to see a city develop in the next 20 years. But I'm, 80, I'm, I'm 65. I cannot guarantee I'll be here in the next 20 years. But one thing I can guarantee that I've built a team that will complete it. And leaders must be ready to have others deliver their vision. And that's an African problem. What we find is that some of our leaders, they have a vision or they have a plan or they call it projects and they want to stay to complete it. Good leaders don't do that. You set your vision, set all the plans, and exit, let somebody else continue. So what I've done in my own case is to look at the youth. I am spending a lot of money on the youth. 1% of my company's revenue, not profit, goes into funding my foundation. And one of the, found, one of the, one of the initiatives is to train future leaders between the ages of 18 and 35. So my hope, if I live that long, that in the next 20 years in a country like the Gambia, everywhere I go, I should find a fellow of the Tough Africa Leadership Academy. Therefore, they will not have anything, no, they will not have any reason to do anything wrong because they have been taught the 12 core values of leadership. We, we've thought about, which is to have integrity, to um, be committed, to be empathetic, to be a futuristic visionary, to be accountable, to be, take good decisions, decision making, you know, to 
be empowered to um, um, I said about commitment to be honest uh, to be innovative and be passionate so even if you fail to have those 12 values just like an exam if they have over 50 percent of that they will make a good leader You know what I feel right now? I feel like the ECOWAS and the AFTCA needs to employ you as their ambassador because you're doing what they are supposed to do. I mean, it's just on paper, but in real work, I feel like this organization needs to be dissolved. I'm sorry. Well, I, feel. I think they're there to do put in the policies and we are the actors. You know, that's what the no, private but, but, sector... But that's not how it's supposed to be. Yeah, but we are private sector. We, we, we take opportunities. So um, and that's what the private sector does. Actually, I will tell you, the Afri Exim Bank now wants to use us as a trade ambassador, inter-African, inter inter-trade inter African ambassador because of our success story, because they've seen like us as Gambians, coming from Little Gambia, mm -hmm. going to Nigeria in Port Harcourt, mm -hmm. making a difference there. And then here we are, next we are going to Sierra Leone. So they want to partner with us and brand us as their ambassador to say that, look, here we have an African who is successful in going cross-border, so therefore we should support him. We should not always look for successful people to become brand ambassadors. We should support young entrepreneurs who have the dream. I mean, if the money comes, if we say that's what drives us to move beyond our comfort zone, let me tell you who's the best brand ambassador for Africa. Who, who's the best brand ambassador? Mr. Wode Maya. Kwame Krumah. Wode Maya. <laughs> because you're the one who's towing everywhere. Let me tell you, let me tell you what happens. Everywhere I step into any country now, they tell me, oh yeah, I saw your, your interview with Wode Maya. So what better ambassador can we have than you? But they've not even seen me yet. <laughs> but what I'm just trying to tell them is that we deserve that support. Yes. And I always encourage more Africans to go beyond their own countries. And yep. that's why I celebrate you every single day. I mean, everywhere I go to, any African entrepreneur, I'll just mention tough. I mean, there's an award that they're going to be giving to you very soon. <laughs> I don't want to give you the clue, but they asked me, they, they, they called me to ask me, yeah. which African entrepreneur do you think deserves African Entrepreneur of the Year? Yeah. I just mentioned tough. Wow. Yeah, wow. So that would be an know, honor. Wait for it. It will be a privilege. I have so many Africans who would love to be like you someday. If you have a message for them, what would that message be? My advice is um, uh, that we should do everything possible to reduce inequality. Let Africans learn to share. Let us uplift everybody. That's the problem of Africa today. Gross inequality. So the more we share, the more we empower Especially the youth, because unemployment is a major problem in Africa today. So we need to empower all these people, we need to get them to, to, to take up hard skills. Education, we need to change our curriculum. The last time, and I told you this, somebody came to see me looking for a job. Mm. And I asked him what was his, did he study? He said, political science. I'm looking for carpenters, masons and electricians and plumbers, I don't have them. And they earn more than some of these social sciences. So I think our governments should look at our curriculums again. Let us train for the jobs that we have in demand. And stop training for jobs that people will just go unemployed. You said the problem of Africa is about not sharing. As I mean, greed is our biggest problem. It's one of the big problems. We have many. Greed is a problem. You know, I have a how saying... Does, how, does, how does greed become a problem? Because anywhere you sit, you want to take everything. Something that is, not, that is not even yours. You know, let me tell you about life, Woody. Life is a buffet and not an a la carte. You know what that means? You know when you go for a la carte? If you don't finish your food, you take it away to your home. You have all rights to do so. But when you go for a buffet, what happens? You eat all you can, and you have a very small tummy. Then you leave the rest there. Then somebody else will come and eat. So, if you understand this in life, then this world will be a better place to stay. Just take enough that will make you survive. 
if somebody want to buy a property in Staff City, what procedure does the person have to go through there? You know, I don't even know how we sell houses. I have a, I have a parabolic eye. I sit on the top, but I will lead you to the sales and marketing department, okay. and they will tell you how to buy and what the prices are. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm great. I'm here to buy a house. You're here to buy a house. It's affordable to buy a house. Of here. course, sir. You have come to the right place. Please have a seat. Thank you. Um, first of all, what's your name? My name is Watermaya, yeah? Watermaya. From Ghana. You have a very nice name. Thank you so much. Would you like some water? I'm okay. You're okay. Is it possible to own a house even though I'm from Ghana? Of course it's possible. It's all over the world. Wherever you are, you can get a house with us. And what is the cheapest house to buy in here? The cheapest house that we have is 1.7 million to 2 million. Dollars? No, dollars. Dollars is local currency. Oh, okay. And yes. That is in dollars because I came with dollars. Ah, oh, well, you have to convert it. So you get a house with us because it's going to be local currency. You use the rate and convert the dollars. Like, it depends on the rate. It could be 51, it could be 50. And what's the most expensive house to buy here? The most expensive house is 6 million. 6 million? Yes. How many bedrooms is It's there? four bedrooms. It's a story building. You have one bedroom downstairs and you have three bedrooms upstairs. On the downstairs, you have a kitchen, a dining area, and a sitting area, and a lounge. Okay. And then upstairs, you have three bedrooms, and one of the bedrooms has its own master, it has its own bathroom. And how do we reach out to you guys in case maybe somebody's watching this video and they want to buy a house from you? You can reach out to us on our social media platforms, or you can reach out to us on our info at toughafricaglobal.com, mm. or you can reach out to us on sales at toughafricaglobal.com, or you can call either of these numbers. If you're not in the Gambia, you put the country code plus 220-776-2333. Whoa. Yes. <laughs> you know your job very well. Yeah? Uh, but anyway, I, I came with dollars. So I'm going to go and change into dollars. So I don't want to be back here again. Is that okay? Well, you don't have to worry about that because if you come with dollars, we don't want you to go through the hustle and struggle of changing the money. We can accept the dollars and make it easy for you. I left the dollars in my car. Can I go and bring it? Sure, no problem. If you're okay with that, you're fine with that. Go in and I'll come back in. Thank you. Have a good day, sir. I'll be waiting. But, but it's been a pleasure. Thank it's good so seeing much. you here again. And it will, this, will, this will not be the last time that no, we're meeting up. Definitely. We'll hook up again. Thank you so much and I really appreciate your time. Pleasure. Thank you. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe and share this video. I, I feel like a lot of people need to get to know TAF. And definitely someday you see TAF going around Africa giving speeches to the youth of Africa just to inspire them to go beyond their comfort zone. My name is Wadamaya and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Aya Maya. Peace out. <laughs>